and repeat. Oh, Gosia, where yes. did you stop? Yes, please. Let's just... <laughs> Number 37. <laughs> no, we started. Just, br about... just briefly. I'm just going to say. We briefly. started at 32. 32. 32. Oh, wow. Very long. Yeah. Okay, yeah. briefly. I'm just going to give answers. Okay, type 1 error. It's, it's level it's alpha so the only other thing that is alpha is level of significance the null hypothesis is rejected if the p value under h naught is smaller because we know that when p value okay, this one we didn't explain if it's less than alpha we reject the null hypothesis that's the rule the power of a statistical test is the ability to detect the significance of the test. So the other one won't be correct because then this one says when we're looking at the p-value, we not when we look at the power of statistical test, we want to detect if the there is any the the result that we are getting are significant or not. So that is that. That's why we chose number two. Type two error occurs when. So we know that type two error will occur when the null hypothesis is rejected, when in fact it's supposed to be, or oh, it's false, which means we're creating a type two error. A statistical test technique, we use the data from the sample to infer the result back to the population to make conclusions about the population and that is why we chose number three the others are talking about predictions and the extent those are uh, the other things not the statistical test in general choosing a larger value of level of significance which is alpha would increase the likelihood of rejecting the h naught and it will decrease the risk of creating a type one error <clears throat> when doing a statistical testing, a researcher would calculate the effect size, and we know that with the effect size, we want to check also <clears throat> the statistical significance of the test that you have. So you're going to check it in terms of whether is it small, uh, that effect is small, medium, or large. Uh, the, to set the maximum risk by positive significance, type 1 error, and the sensitivity of the test is determined by the power of effect. Okay. <clears throat> Peter, okay, I'm not going to read the whole sentence. Based on the statement, he has to determine whether the level of negative attitude of companies towards people with HIV is somewhat different from that of the workers in general. It does not say anything about the less than, that one is bigger than or less than or more than or greater than or less than. So therefore that won't be correct, that won't be correct. It says it is not equal. Okay, and we got there in two minutes. Peter finds that the workers in his company has a mean attitude score of 50. Which of the statistical test procedure below would be most appropriate to use? <clears throat> Based on the information that we have, the population standard deviation is known. Therefore, we're going to use the Z test. And because we're using only one company, uh, information from the same one group, then we're going to be calculating Z test for a simple sample mean. And we are back on track. 41. Statistical hypotheses are statements about one population parameters. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Question 42 and 43 is based on the statement below. An educational psychologist compares two groups of learners from urban and rural areas 
on a language comprehension test. She manages to get a sample of 600 urban and 400 rural matched for gender and age to complete the test. <clears throat> she finds the mean language comprehension score for the first sample to be 32.5 and the mean for the second sample to be 30.7 for the rural and urban or from urban and rural respectively. Now, question 42 <clears throat> is asking, the educational psychologist decides to do a t-test to compare the sample mean of the language comprehension of the learners with the sample mean of the rural learners. Which of the following is the appropriate test to calculate? Three. <clears throat> Uh, one is for one sample. If you see T for the mean bar, TX means only one sample. Okay. That will represent one sample. D will represent two and two groups. Let's put it there. Uh, not two groups, one group, but two variables. The after. So it's the difference. So this will be two very, not two variables. The be, the before and the after. Let me put it that way because it makes my life mm. difficult when I talk about mm -hmm. that in that before way. Treatment. Yes. Mm, so D will refer to the before and the after. So that is the D. And the C will refer to two groups, two independent groups. So that should be the one because we're using the urban and the rural. There are two groups. Okay, so a psychologist calculates the appropriate T test to compare the two means and the result, and the result is a T statistic value of. 2.67. She determines that the significant level is 1%. The researcher is, however, concerned that the difference between the two groups may mean it's fairly small and that the significant results may be consequence of the large sample size. What could she do to check whether this significant result is meaningful in use in a practical sense? She would calculate. Two. She will calculate Cohen's D, the effect size. Which of, yeah, which of the following level of significance indicated below gives the greatest risk of committing a type 1 error. Three. It must be one or two. Zero five. Number two. Um, number one. <laughs> so now we have three answers. <laughs> <laughs> Can I check the difference, Miss Boy? Um, Yes, you can. Um, Isn't it that like probabilities between zero N1, the level of significance, it will be either 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. So it will be between these two only, normally, as I have observed. No, right. you can have a, a level of significance of... At 10. At 10, yes. At 90% confidence interval, you can have at 89%. They are differentiated. 
remember a level of significance is how it's how much error or margin of error that you will allow so it's to, three it indicates the maximum risk that the researcher yeah, the is willing yes so 10 percent will be the make so if you choose the higher level of significance it means you are allowing a higher percentage of misclassification of your 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 results because that will say how the uh, five percent you're saying i'm allowing at least five percent one percent so you will choose it like this in a wow, medical I environment understand. yeah in a medical environment where we do not want to classify people as having cancer when they are not having a cancer we we want to have a level of significance of 1%. But in HR, you can even allow it to be 10% because we can classify people. It's not going to affect their health-wise. But unless if we're saying people are at risk of doing something or falling into, uh, uh, let, let me see, which one will be worse? Um, <clears throat> work, by, work balance, like um, people falling into depression at work or having too much work or being overworked, then you, you don't want to set your level of significance high because then if you set it 10%, most people will be classified as, as having a risk and then you will end up closing the shop. So you need to make sure that you, you set it low so that then it allows for that smaller so 10 would be the maximum risk so on this one the higher the, if if there was uh, uh which other one is missing on this so this is 99 uh this is 90 and this is 95 so there is also like 80 which then 80 will be 20 percent uh, and then there is, there are so many um, more than this that you can set. <clears throat> Wait, uh, sorry, three will be the, three will be the right one. Okay. So when applying mm -hmm. a test, a statistical test, when applying a statistical test, if the p-value is smaller than the level of significance, we mm, the null hypothesis. What do we mm. do in p-value? Number two. Two. Do not number three. If the p-value is smaller, we reject. Yeah, we get the null hypothesis. You. <laughs> And that is the rule. That's what what they gave you there is just this rule, the rule that you need to know. That should be in your mind all the time. The rule for P value. Yeah, yeah it is it's confusing rule. sometimes uh, because it's too much content, but to master these rules is not easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, yeah. So if like, the P value is small, it must go. Uh, a yeah. not must go. Because mm, like this one, it says it's smaller, meaning when it's smaller, we reject. When it's larger, we do not. Yes. Mm. And actually, the study guide says when the p-value is equals to or smaller than the chosen level of significance, then you reject. So even if it's equals to, I don't know if they would put it in that way, be mindful. Yeah, okay. Okay, so 46, consider the following statistical hypothesis. Mean of 50 or mean is greater than 50. Suppose that two tail p value is given at 0 0.045. I think we are repeating this. And the level of significance is 0 0.05. The sample mean is found to be 55. What is the value of a one tail directional p value? I did do it 
a discussion around this. I'm not going to number one again. No. Yes, yes, we divide the two tailed by two. You divide the two tail by two. So you will take that 0, 0,0345 and divide it by two, which will be option three. three. So you must always remember that if they give you a one tail and they ask you to find a two tail, what you will do? You will multiply the multiply. two tail by two. Yes. Remember what I just I demonstrated. I said you will have two areas for the p value. So it means this is divided between those two, but it creates one p value for a two tail. For a one tail, we only look at if it's on the greater than. So this is greater than. So it it means we're only going to take the p this p value that is on here. So that is zero comma one seven five three. A t, t test will be used to compare the means when. When do we use t test? One. Number one. 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 Number one. When the population standard deviation is unknown. The p value depends on. Size of the chest statistics. Two. Two. Oh, this is very tricky oh. because I don't know what they try to do. Because we have to calculate <laughs> and get it this from the Z table. So, uh, so it's it's very it's very tricky with this. So. This is why I'm saying this is very difficult to even try to understand what do they mean by this? What do they mean by p-value depends on? So it needs you to think hard because when you go find the p-value, if we're doing a p-value for z, then we need to calculate the z statistic, remember? Which is the, t mm. the z test. Yeah. Then we take the z test and we go to the table and go find the p-value. but mm. When we go find the value on the T table, we need to look at the alternative hypothesis side, whether is it a one directional or is it a two, a two non-directional test because of that. So now they have one, two, three, which are all, all the things that I just explained here. So what does it depend on? I'm going to assume that it depends on number two, because if you don't have number two, you can't find the others. What is the test statistic? So it says the p-value depends on, so it you need to calculate the test statistic in order for you to find the p-value. And that is if we're talking about the z. When we're talking about t, which we can actually manually calculate that and find it. We need to use a statistical tape, a statistical tool to calculate the p value for us. But mm. in order, mm. in order for you to be able to find the p value, the z table comes after you have calculated your z test statistic, which is that the test statistic. Then you go to the table and find. That is the step number two. Then when you go find the value on the table, you also need to remember what you said on the, uh, not on the null hypothesis, but on the alternative hypothesis. So also that, okay, that we should actually eliminate. That is not even because only if we have the alternative, because with the alternative, it tells you, the value you find on the table or the value that you calculate, it will be a one p value and this will be two times the p value you find on the table if you're using the z. So it's between those two. So, But because the z table comes after the test statistic, so I'm going to say it depends on the test statistic. 
Uh, sorry. If you have calculated your test statistics, you can find the p value. Uh, can I maybe just come in there? Yes. Uh, we have those z um the, the the values from the from the z table. So we cannot have those if we did not have the the the, the z values or the z, something like that. So wouldn't that also be the case? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's why I'm saying it depends on what they try to achieve with that. Because the p value comes from the z table. Ta if we're talking about the z tables, but in order for you to go find the p value on the z table, you need to have calculated the test statistic, which is the z score. Remember, you will have calculated that z, the mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error, uh, which is divided by the square root of n. And then well, once you have this value, you go to the Z table to go find. How does size then come into effect here if we're talking about the size of the test statistic? The size will tell you, so this will be minus three point, oh, let's not use minus three point something. Let's say it's one minus 1.4. Remember when you go to the table, when you come to the table, what you do? The same thing that we discussed uh, earlier, which area are you choosing, but based on your size, which is this, your Z value. So the bigger the size value will tell you, in the larger portion, it will be the bigger probability. Oh, come on, how do I get rid of the blue thing? So that is the size. This size of your test statistics is reliant on your test statistic, your Z. And remember also the size depending on as well, whether it's positive or negative, like we said. So if it's greater than, we know that we say if you got negative, you go away in the negative side and it's the larger side. If it's negative and it was less than, yeah, I don't know how to draw this thing now. Jesus me. So if if it's negative and it's in the less than, you find it minus one point four. You go to the smaller area, and those are the things. So it's the the size of your test statistic that will determine where you are, plus including the sign you get from your alternative hypothesis. So it's one of those. So I don't know. You you can I don't know. Do we choose I don't know in the exam as well. <laughs> The bad thing about um, exams, they confuse us because of, you would find we know the facts, but the way they put the question, it's just meant to make us cuckoos. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, and probably, yeah, you see, because they talk about the, so if, if they would, yeah, that's the other thing. Um, I would have gone for number one. But you see, number one is the after effect because you cannot get to number one if you don't have. If you no, do not get have to, the test if statistic. I, if I have the Z tables, I'll go to number one because I will have the P value, which will be dependent on that on the on the information on that table. I first no, need but to the have... table. No, no, but the table you cannot what? get to the table if you haven't calculated your test statistic. Mm. That value on the table, the P values, all these P values that you see there, all these probabilities, 
they are reliant on this value, which is your test statistic, which is this Z. You cannot come here and choose any value that you see there and say, from this I can move there. But isn't you this Z here, you're rightfully saying this is dependent on that Z. And this, what we're looking at here is the Z table. This is the Z table, but in order for you to find the P value, it's dependent on you having calculated your Z value and coming here and saying, this is my Z value. It's not dependent on the table. And it cannot be dependent on the table. The table is the after effect. But the after like effect, for example, after effects indicates dependence. If no, I'm like, having an effect like, on something. No, okay, let's, let's listen. Let, let's assume then now we don't have a table, but we're using a statistical tool. We still need mm. to calculate on the statistical tool. It will need to first calculate the Z or the T test in order for it to go and generate your T, your your P value. Your p-value can only be calculated or found after you have calculated and you know what your, t, your test statistics looks like because you use your test statistic to go find your p-value. Yes. Hi. Hmm. So it cannot be on the table. Yes. And it it also cannot be on the Z table only because even with the T test, yes. we still have to find yes. the value, although it's given to us. Yes, uh, correct. Correct. So the only option on there that is correct because also even if we're not looking at the t table also for the chi square test you can also find the p value so it cannot be only on this table on the t test on the f test we find the p values there on the chi square test we find the p values there so all of them depends on you calculating the test statistic. Ms. Boy, can I confuse things a bit? <laughs> in, yeah, session, confuse <laughs> in session two of the the study, um, you we did the hypothesis testing and there were four steps that you um, said that we need to take. Is that something different? Like the step one would be to state the null hypothesis. And then step two is what kind of test must I do? Um, no, it will be different because okay. on the hypothesis testing, all those six steps. Mm -hmm. So one is stating the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Two is yeah. stating what you are given from the question, which yeah. will identify whether the population mean is given or the population standard deviation is given, what is your N, yeah. and so forth. Then step number three, we said, we need to find the critical value, which is something different, totally different to the p-value. Okay. So the critical value is something outside. So where we use the level of significance and uh, only the level of significance for Z. For T, we use the level of significance and the degrees of freedom. Okay. And then you go calculate your test statistic and then you make your decision. Yeah. But in making a decision in relation to a p-value, mm -hmm. you need to calculate your test statistic, mm -hmm. then take your test statistic and go past the p-value. Yes. And based on your alternative hypothesis, sign, it will tell you whether, if you're doing a two-tailed test, whether you're going to add the p-values together when you get them, if you're doing a one tail direction, the value you see on the table, and depending also whether is it the greater than or the less than side. If it's the less than side, the value you see on the table, if it's negative, that will be the value you use. If it's positive, then you say, but uh, you take the larger side. 
but if it's on the larger side, you also say one minus the value you see on the larger side, which will be smaller, and then you add them. So it's that complicated process, and that is why they don't want you to learn all that complicated process. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to find the p-value, you should have already calculated your test statistic. And the p-value cannot only be rely or dependent on the z table alone, like somebody already also said, because also t, you can find the p-value on the t because that's what we did on what was this the t test that they they didn't say this is a t value but you can also find the t test um p value you can also go find the chi squared p value you can also go find the f distribution which is for the other sessions that you don't do uh, for the anovas and all that you can go find the critical value for all that or the p-value, not the critical value, the p-value for it, because based on those tables. So there are different tables that you can use to find the p-value. So the only thing that you need is the test statistic. Let's see if I can delete all this. Maybe for later, we can just check on page 78. Maybe we can do it as our homework. Because it's talking oh. about the null hypothesis and the value of the p-value. Page 78. Eight. That is on talking about study three two. Three point two. Before that, yeah, up, I think it's paragraph three. Yes, the, the previous is okay. You mean you were referring to this one? Yes, if you go down there, you read where it says it is an extremely important. The probability of obtaining a value of 104 purely by chance due to random measurement errors when the null hypothesis is true is referred to as the p-value. Maybe that is the case that they are looking for. And that is why I'm not sure in terms of when they say the p-value depends on the null hypothesis now. Do they mean the, the same thing? I think number two is the most confusing. The P value is confusing. Where we it's are due to random measurement errors, which is the size. So I think number two is the most correct answer compared yeah, so to the three. I wanted to interpret. I hear In you. I agree that, with you on number two, but this line where we are on page seventy-eight. It says this probability of obtaining the value. It sounds like the chance of obtaining the amount of 104. Please help me with English purely by chance. It, it looks like it doesn't talk about the p value itself. It talks about this amount value. Am I correct? Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm reading on page 
people should include. I think it's size. So I, I would say number two is, I mean, number two is the most correct. It's confusing, but if you had to compare the three, I would still go with number two. I could be wrong. Even when you Google it, it talks about size. Number two is the, is, is the most correct. Um, I also I saw this in the feedback of 2018, one of the papers, is, but it had said the size of the p-value. So, but yeah, I think it's the is, same thing. I think so too. Yeah, I think it's number two because on page 84 it says that the test statistic is a value with a non probability distribution. We can use it to determine what the probability is of finding an effect of particular size, which, refer, which we refer to as the p value. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Um, so the p value gives the probability of obtaining the sample and results under the h naught. If the p value is small, the probability is very small. The smaller the p value, the more likely the null hypothesis is false. That does not help, really. Ma'am, can you read page 84? Where is page 84? Where it says type 1 and 2 errors of the power of the statistical test. Wait. And the, the first paragraph, like the, the last three sentences on the first paragraph. In the, we I am <laughs> Yeah. Wait. The, where it says yeah it the last work. part you can create a test statistic that is that is an indication of how far the observed effect as reflected in the simple data deviates from what the null hypothesis tells us what to expect if it were true the test statistic is available with a known probability probability distribution. We can use it to determine what the probability is of finding an effect of a particular size, which we refer to as the p value. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for finding the answer. Thank you. This is it. Thank you. That's it. This oh. is it. You see, we just need to read. Oh, Gosiam, how are you going to read three hundred? 185 pages before the 10th. There you go. Half, half the, the exam time is gone. <laughs> yeah. um, so you must make as much notes as possible, um, even including the page numbers, because I think you said your exam is a take home. So make sure that you put all these references and pages and some way where you can make note of. Hey, all right. So we done, settled. So what is the answer? Number two. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so the different scores. I thought statistics is the most difficult one. Hey, you guys are writing the most difficult paper. The different score is like you're doing pure stats. The different score, which is D of your mean or X2 minus X1, is used to calculate the, the T test of difference in the case of one or two or both one two three number two number two hi uh, guys you are I disappointed number one i would say number three number one, three. Uh, number, number, one. number one it's number one when number you talk about the differences it should be dependent samples it means the before and after 
Remember the the D. The T D. Yes. The test for dependence. The T C is the comparison of the mean of independent group. Ah, thank you. And then the T X is your the te uh, the test for the unknown population. T test one sample. One sample, thank you. So you have yes. three T's. Be careful of those T's. Yes. They talk something differently. Each of them. Which of the following terms? Population parameters, sample statistic is not required when calculating a T test. Number three. And number three, the population yeah. parameter, yes. Suppose you find that the value of a t-test calculated for your research results when comparing two means is 3.0 and the appropriate p-value is 0, 0,02. Which conclusion is appropriate? Mm. Okay, so you, what you need to do, because they gave you the level of significance, different level of significance, let's do it this way. So take the first one, which is the p-value. So the p-value less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. That is, that is the rule. So now, if you know this is a decision, Take each one of them. So let's take the p-value there is 0, 0,02. What is my alpha there is 0, 0,01. Put the sign here. So the sign will be, this is bigger okay. than that, so it will be greater than. So therefore, it means we're not rejecting the null hypothesis here. So this one says, do not reject null hypothesis. So you go to the next one. So the, the two that are left are the same. So you take your p-value is 0, 0,02. Your level of significance is 0, 0,05. Put the sign, 0, 0,02 is less than 0, 0,05. So therefore, this one says we reject the null hypothesis, isn't it? So now then go and answer the question. Number one, it says reject the null hypothesis if the level of significance is 0, 0,01. Yes. That's not correct because we do not reject the null hypothesis at that. Number two, we need to be rejecting the null hypothesis. Let's see, we do not reject the null hypothesis at alpha equals to 0, 0,01. That's not true. Number three, reject the null hypothesis at alpha. It's the same as what we found there. Before only number three is correct. So yeah. that's how you can make decision on this. So you will need to validate some, all of them based on the p-value and the decision. So if only you can remember the decision, rule this by now, you should know it by heart. We have been talking about it since yesterday. I know the decision rule, but still this question, it's shopping me ding dong. I don't know whether it's English or what. No, it's because also oh. they gave you two measures here. Yeah. But also you need to remember the following. When you make a decision in your hypothesis testing, because in your module, actually, they made it easy. They only want you to make a decision based on the p-value and the level of significance. So it means every way where we have to make a decision, we always have to use the rule, the decision rule. So you need to always compare your p-value and your level of significance. Okay. Let's look at 52. In which of the following cases can the score on two variables not be regarded as independent? 
Okay. The variable represents the scores from people in a control group and a treatment group where the members of the two groups was randomly selected from the same population before and after. Hmm? B, the variable represents scores from the same person measured before and after the treatment on the same test. Both. Both, yes. Option B. B, is, B is dependent. Which A, of the following two scores of two variables not be regarded as independent? So now let's understand this. A and B. B is, what is B? Is B dependent or independent? Is dependent. B, B is dependent, dependent because B they are measuring the person. effects before and after. Dependent, before and after. So this, A, it says the variables represent the scores from persons in a control group and the treatment groups. Where each group. member of the two groups was selected randomly from the same pro, uh, population before the treatment was applied. So, number A, is it dependent or independent? Independent. Independent. Number one is independent. independent. So, what makes it independent? Can you show me here? What, what do I look at? Because this is a control the and treatment, the, treatment group. the control group and the treatment group are two independent groups. Wow, thank you. Hey, Those English are two independent me. groups. And the second one, it says from the same person, but they did a before and after. So you always okay. need to look at those. Interpretation is something okay, else. So, you, so the option two is the one that says B but not A. Yeah. If English doesn't kill me through this course, I will say I have survived. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so which one is A but not B, B but not A, both? So it's number two. B but not A, it's number two. This. Cohen's D is a measure of one, two, three. It's one. It's one. <clears throat> and large T test statistic implies that the P value will be large. Implies that the P value will be small. Is unrelated to the size of the P value. Oh, number two. <laughs> this is very good. With your module, I, I don't know. Mm. No clue. Not clue <laughs> at all. These people, they <laughs> are playing with us. So, yeah. a large test statistic yeah. cool. implies that the p value will be large or the p value will be slow, it will be small. What do you mean by that? The larger the sample, the smaller the, the errors. So the P you see, P you're saying larger the sample, so larger the T so the T test. Oh, yeri, 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 yeri. Your module is very tricky. I think I'm number two. three. If you think about the T test and a Z test um, in the same idea and think about the graph to see where the, the value will, will be on the graph, right? 
Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because, let me draw the graph for you. So, what do you mean? This is the graph. Where is our t-test? So we calculated our t-test. Let's assume that our t-test was, let's not even use minus. Let's say it was 7.5. We calculate our p value or we go find the because it's very difficult to find the p value i can't even estimate i can't even go to the any table that's the challenge with the question that's why i'm i'm not even sure what they're trying to ask yeah the what do they mean? We have too many challenging questions here. What there is no question paper that we can we we just like smooth right like we have to Google such hi no man so mm, let me see I need to find some one of my notes oh gosh it will be it's not gonna be easy miss boy what is the t test statistic is it the one that we differentiate with the z test and the t test of the <laughs> a known population and unknown population is it the same thing yes the 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 t test is the value you calculate using that formula remember t but now what would make it be given what would make it large that's how i'm trying to approach it yes so let's 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 use uh let's take the one with the one sample because that one is not that complicated Okay. Because then it says the sample mean minus the population mean divide by the standard deviation over the square root of n. Please show up. So there. So if your sample size becomes larger, you see that's the challenge here because this will just give you the larger the t test. It's not going to tell you the p-value, what happens to the p-value. And that's where my challenge is because the p-value of a t-test, we cannot calculate it. We don't even know how it get to be calculated. We are talking by three. a statistical program Excuse what the p-value is. Excuse so we me? need to find in the notes, sorry. Um, I have a thing on uh, page 116 uh, where it says, um, remember, however, that the T value is sensitive to sample size. For a larger sample, a smaller effect would be significant. Okay, okay. okay. let's, let's, let's go, go there. there. 116. I am on 116. Um, below, go down. The, la the last par paragraph before the uh, formula based on the p-value. You mean that one? Yes. Okay. But this doesn't say much to answer our question. Our question says, let's go back. A larger t test statistics implies what? Because that should be in relation to the p-value. A larger test statistic 
T test statistic implies that the p value is large or the p value is small or is unrelated to the size of the p value. So, Should it not be they unrelated? Tell us anything about that? Um, no. What does it say here on where you have marked red on page 116? Yeah, this paragraph, what does it say? I see something small, a sample smaller effect would have a significant. <laughs> Can we read it? I don't see the other part is cutting. I'm trying to make sense of it. If we could hijack it. Where? And may, yeah, this paragraph, what does it read, Miss Boy? Because of, for me, it I just see half of this. I see up to three, topic three, and then the rest I don't see. Oh, the based on the p value between the mean seems its end here, and then I can see. Remember, however, that the t value is sensitive okay. to sample size. I don't know what it says going okay. on. So it just says based on the p value, the difference between the means seems quite impressive. Remember, however, that the t value is sensitive to sample size for a larger sample a smaller effect will be significant. See topic three, section 3.3.3. .3 so, so, so I, 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 I don't know if whatever is on page 120 is going to help us. Let's see, 120. The first, the first paragraph there, I mean, that's the, the first paragraph after the formula. This is formula. Can I ask, how are you getting this page? Are you searching them on computer or you have <laughs> been through them? <laughs> this this page page. Come so on, this T value is larger than the P value is bound to be. There we go. Hey, thank you. You see, we need people who can search PDF. There please you go. Us, so the T value it. is so large that the P value is bound to be very small. As in the case of the Z statistic, the T values of the above three are seldom not significant. We computed it and found that it would be 0, 0,00000. 000 000. Most computer programs will report such as P value to a four figures or decimal, which is 0, 0,000. This P value is clearly smaller than the level of significance. So that's H0 must be rejected and H1 must be accepted. And there we go. So let's see if we can answer the question. The question was asking, a larger test statistic implies? Number two. A smaller p value. We need to use Google so often. OK. So I think I hope you are also making like notes saying page page some number page 120 somewhere there so that you can remember because i'm not making you note of the page boy through you can i ask a question through you yes you can fellow student how do you search this do you use a computer or you have seen it in your studies i'm wondering <laughs> If this method uh, could help me towards exams. Uh, I'm using, this time I'm, I'm using, using the static yeah. guide. Mm, you click on the magnifying glass, it looks like, and it brings up a find window. Oh, you're using the computer one. Because of the book one, it, it just makes me spin. Thank you. Yeah, so if you go onto the study guide, the digital one that you can download from the, the study material, on the left corner next to the printer, there's a magnifying glass there, the fine text. I see. And you I click see, on I it. See. So any, if you type in hypothesis or anything that you're searching, then it will highlight or bring you to that pages. I see. I think when we, what, what you're giving me, you're giving me an idea to take the very question paper, go on the digital one, and mm. whatever that I don't know, go yes. and look for the study guide. Because if it's easy this way, yeah. than paging through... The book, the book makes your head spin. Thank you so, wow. so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Ash, I like facilitating this session because you guys are very helpful. You're not quiet. You're helping one another. Thank you very much as well. So we found the answer. It's number two. Moving on. Five and fifty-six are based on this. A researcher is investigating the claim that playing a specific RD computer game will improve the eye-hand coordination of children who play it. To test this idea, a group of 40 grade 11 learners are tested on eye-hand co coordination tests, where a high score indicates better eye-hand coordination they then play the game for an hour after school every day over a period of two weeks. After two weeks, they do the same eye-hand coordination test once more. The mean score for eye-hand coordination after the treatment, which is playing the game, are compared to the mean score of eye-hand coordination before treatment. What are we doing, independent or dependent? This is, it's a dependent. dependent. Okay. So dependent. Uh, we're still lost. It's the before and after. Mm. Which is an appropriate alternative test for this analysis? I would say three. I would also say three. Yeah is greater than the population before. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Because of always after the treatment, there should be improvement. It makes sense, number three. Not so it talks about improving the hand eye uh, Exactly. That's the key word. Yeah, it, it greater than. I think mm, it's not. I two. agree with number three. Let's hear number two. How are you um, supporting it? But you know what they've done? They've put the sign, they put the words funny, like it's actually number two because, bef no, 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 it's actually they put after and before for number three. They first put after, no, that's right, that's right, yeah, sorry, sorry. The question here is, which is an appropriate alternative hypothesis? So True, true. The alternative hypothesis needs to give kind of a direction. So not necessarily. Two. Not necessarily. It may Why are you guys the... getting all these directions that you're getting? Because exactly. you need that question. I don't see what you guys are seeing. <laughs> You know the I think the well. first one is one because after is smaller than before. So before um, is great. How do you know that than. after is smaller than before? No, that is the alternative one, two, hypothesis. Three, we interpret no, but where in, the score. Sentence, where in the sentences? Yeah. In the paragraph. The first sentence. The first sentence. Sentence. boy. The very first the sentence. sentence. It says if the three D computer game will improve will improve exactly. the hand coordination of children who play it. So it means yes. after treatment, they expect no, 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 to be no, an no. improvement, which is more. No. no. They could have <laughs> even said there is a difference between when they, when they were... I told you, you need to look for words like it's more than, it's greater than, it's bigger than, it's greater than. Improve. No, but improvement can improve. be more. Get better. Improve yeah, better. Get better more than. Online number three says where a high score indicates improvement better. Improvement gets better. No, but that says a high co a high score will will you can also get a high score even before. It doesn't mean it's better than the the high score that you would get after. That is just additional information. But the critical statement is the, the critical point is the first sentence. It, it clearly says 
you want to test if there will be an improvement. That can improvement can only be if there is a difference, and the difference has to be more. If you improve on something, yeah, I agree. It I can because because the the paragraph does not speak about difference. It only speaks about improving and bad. There's nothing about difference. Number two, it can be number two also. It is number three. I don't know. You know what? English confuses me. That's why I'm saying after if I pass or I survive, it's something else about this language. Look at the last sentence. Ne? It says the mean scores for eye-hand coordination after the treatment, ne? which is playing the game, are compared. No. You are confusing yourself. There. Sorry to interrupt. You are confusing yourself. The mm -hmm. first thing to look at is what are they trying to do? There you're looking at what they've done already. So you need to have a hypothesis where you will have the now and the alternative. Before you go to the, the, the last part of, uh, of the paragraph, you need to define those first. Also, what we're doing here actually is to define a hypothesis. Are you saying uh, Exactly. That? You give the now and the alternative. So wow. the, the now has yeah. to be... The null has to be equal. Yes, and in this and case, the researcher for the alternative. wanted to find out if playing this game, the game will improve. Improve. That has to be it better than is. before. Yes. So now we're looking at the alternative. I agree with number three because of I'm saying that improve. Improve is better, is more than greater than. But now, number three is likely to be, Miss Boy, you had your view to say, where do we see all this? Okay, so, okay, okay. So now let's, 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 let's understand this. I, all of you are saying almost the right thing and the same thing. So, the first thing that you need to check is, what is the researcher want to prove? And that's the main thing out of everything. The others will follow. So the researcher here is investigating the claim that a 3D computer game will improve the eye-hand coordination of children who plays it. That's what the researcher is trying to prove. He's trying to check whether there will be an improvement. Yeah, he never said there is a uh, the ones who play it before and after they will have that. Nothing ab about that. All what he wants to prove is to see whether there is an improvement after they have played the game. So what they did is they went and they tested 4011 graders that on the hand eye coordination test, where a high score indicates a better I had coordination. This was even before they can play the game. They tested them. Then they play the game for an hour after school every day over a period of two weeks. After two weeks, they record the same I and head coordination test score. Then they want to check whether there is a difference between the mean score of eye hand coordination after treatment to those before treatment. Now we need to ask ourselves, based on this information, our alternative hypothesis, is there a way where the researcher said in his own weight that after or oh, playing will improve or oh, playing is better than Miss Boy, excuse the me. So, yes, so That's you are number saying number well uh, number three. Number three. And Does number two work? Because before even after there's no statement which says what will have happened, can we say it's not equal because we don't know the prediction there? <laughs> uh, still back to differ. You know, the word improve is critical. I've, 
I think number two is the best one now because now from the explanation it says there is no longer the same as they were before. There has been some change. So before is not the same as after. Yes, whatever the case, we don't know. Whether after. Yes. Analysis so number two is correct. Yeah, so number see, for I, me, I for me, number two is. makes sense. I see that yes. different. Let's let's just analyze what Miss Boy uh, said. She said we have to realize what the what the intention of the researcher is. The intention of the researcher here is to investigate the claim that you know if after playing there there will be an improvement. So then the, the now hypothesis would be uh, equals to meaning. You know, uh, it will be equal. So, if there is an improvement afterwards, if, uh, which is what she or he will be trying to 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 uh, to investigate, improvement can only mean better than before. It has to be better than before. I agree, but uh, it's not specified if there was any improvement. They left us hanging there. No, remember that's what you're going to test. Before you have, but the, 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 whatever, you have to you have to identify your 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 hypothesis. Results comes later. The, which is the point of departure? Identify exactly. Hypothesis. Okay. Exactly. But right. also, there's a claim. There's a claim. Specific 3D computer game will will yeah, improve. Hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Um, let so let go let, let me summarize. Let me summarize what you guys are saying. Based on the discussion that you have in, it's true that the null hypothesis will have an equal, but what matters the most is what goes in the alternative. So if we agree that it says will improve means the after will be bigger than or will be more than the before. So it means there, I hand coordination of of the uh, children will be better after. So what we're saying is before is less than after. In summary, that's what we say. Before is less than after. So it's after, which is the same as after is more than before. Before is less than after, or after is bigger than before, and that is what. All these statements here, they are. Exactly. So if we say that is not applicable because of that will improve, meaning then the after will be bigger than before, then Number one. then alternative would not be not equal. This one Number says, two. we're saying after, so number one says after is less than before. That's what, if you choose after. So it's you must be very three. careful because you're saying, after is less than before, so you're telling me that after There's they play no the game, there is no improvement. Exactly. So choose number one. So then, in terms of that, it says they will improve, so we're going to assume that it improves. So when it improves, then number three is... Correct. Ms. Paul, I, I don't think that is correct. Um, the reason why I say that is the researcher's hypothesis is saying that it will improve. And the question is, which is an alternative hypothesis to the analysis? Um, are we not supposed to be stating which answer is reflecting the alternative hypothesis? Oh my goodness, hypothesis. <laughs> to that which um, is status, stated um, on this scenario, yes, which would be also, question yes. number one. Yes, yes, number one. Because we have to come to the conclusion after. Not, not necessarily, because what um, okay, here is the other thing that we also need to take into consideration when we when we uh, put the researcher's uh, statement. So if our researcher statement is greater than or equal, it will be in your null in your null hypothesis, and the alternative will be. So if we say the researcher is saying it's greater than or equal, if that is the case, then the alternative will be less than it will say it's not going to improve. But if we say the researcher is saying 
there, singing is greater than. We cannot put that in your null hypothesis, but you can put it in your alternative hypothesis. Yes. Because then, because in your null hypothesis, you can only put any any sign that does not have an equal sign so which will be the less than or the greater than in so your, we in can the null hypothesis in yes the in your null hypothesis, hypothesis. we are saying if, if the if this says improve which means it's not exit they don't stay the same but they improve which is greater than they are not the same they will be more than it will be greater than we only can put it in the alternative because in the null hypothesis we cannot put the less than or the greater than no because, your, because your, your null hypothesis so let me see do we still no this one doesn't deal with the null hypothesis so your null hypothesis always has an equal sign so in your null hypothesis we always have a greater than or equal less than or equal So we can still put this as the researchers want to prove that it's more than. If improve is more than, yes, this is go into your into your alternative hypothesis. And when you do your decision, that's where most of the time you find that you're going to have a type one or a type two error, rejecting the false null hypothesis when it something like that you will be committing a type 2 error because this won't be a true null hypo a true null hypothesis that is on the null hypothesis statement because we take in the null hypothesis statement we putting it in your alternative Beyond me, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Okay. Because for me, I wouldn't. Yeah. Also for me, I wouldn't even say that. Um. I wouldn't even say that the researcher wants to prove. Oh. Uh, to test that uh, this will improve the eye coordination as greater than or less than. It's still whether there are any differences between the two, because we're going to compare whether before or after, are they different? Um, I want to suggest something. Um, if you look at the next question, would that not help you to determine the question 55? To, to, if you can figure out if the question or if the, yeah, if the hypothesis is a one-tailed t-test or two-tailed, that would help. But that's the thing, because the minute you choose one tail here and you say that is your one-tailed test, Therefore, when you come here, option one and option two, you will choose one tail because it's between those two. If you choose not equal, it will be a two tail because number three is incorrect. So yeah, it depends no, no, on which statement you choose in number one, number 55. You are going to choose also here yeah, the incorrect statement. 56 would be number one. And number 55 would be 3. No, 56 won't be, wait, 50, what? 56 wait, is number back. 1. 56 is? Number 1, because you've got two what groups before and after. Is required. So you're saying 50, I'm very confused. 55, 55? 55 is 3. 56 is one. Three. And 56 is? One. Okay. So that is for those who chose number three. Those who choose number one, your 55 is number one, and your 50, 
six will be will still remain number one. Accident. Those who choose number two, your fifty five will be number two, and your fifty six will be number two. So the only thing that is very confusing here is that improve. What does improve mean, ma'am? I don't know. I keep telling you boy. that there will be things Miss that boy. you guys do that I don't even know what I I'm, think I'm asking. <laughs> Let's let's make it simple. No, I, I, I think because it says because it says improve, it means it's greater than. If he didn't it's want, if, if he didn't want to for it to be greater than, he would have said to find if uh, playing the computer game has an effect. Exactly. Like our and high hand coordination, the, then then yeah. would know the effect would either be less than or it would be greater than. Exactly. If I have 50% on my on my test now, for me to improve, I have to get more than 50%. Wow, that's the meaning of the word improve. Okay. Mm. All right. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to leave it to you guys. Give me an answer. 55. Are we sticking with three? Three. <laughs> <laughs> One, three. <laughs> And 56? It's one. It's one. One. Okay. So one. you need to go and read more uh, in terms of those. Um, very tricky. Mm. <clears throat> I prefer English, things to be never straightforward. Us. No, I prefer things to be straightforward. And this is very tricky. I need people to be clear with me. Tell me that it's greater than or less than or don't confuse me with all English. Which of the following assumptions are sufficient for a two sample T test? Even if the sample size are relatively small. The, okay, so the assumption are sufficient for a two sample T test. <clears throat> so, the sample standard deviation must be equal, but the distribution must be unknown. The data from the sample comes from a population that are normally distributed so that the standard deviation need not be considered. The data from both samples comes from a population that are normally distributed and the sample standard deviations are equal. Number three. Because so the, the sample selected from that. one sample has no effect on the other. The samples are randomly selected and are independently drawn. The population variances should be unknown. What else am I missing? I will say that needs to one. make that statement. Correct. The sample standard deviations must be equal. The word unknown makes me to say there's two, the T test is what we, I don't know. I I don't even understand that question. I think as well. Uh -uh. Very trick. But I say three. I chose one because of the teachers and that unknown on the option. Uh, unknown, I think, is the mean for T test. If I'm not mistaken. Not for standard deviation. Mm. So I be I guess it's gonna be two or three. Mm, the population mean is unknown for the T test. Mm. 
Number three. Please help, Miss Boy. I'm I'm also Ms. going Boy. with number three. No, I'm also going with number three, but this equal standard deviations is throwing me off. I, Miss Boy, want to kind of quote you. You know, one on 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 one of the presentation that you made on the formulas, a clear distinction between the Z test and the T test is that the word known, the descriptive uh, statistics are known, and on the other one, some of the descriptive statistics are unknown. So when I just see this word alone and <laughs> yes, that is that no, I that is true. Different. No, that is true. What um, if I can go back to that as well? So for the t test, this the population standard deviation needs to be unknown. What um, only the population standard deviation and your distribution can be from a population that is normally distributed. So this is correct in terms of what they are saying there. What I'm not sure about is the following, because statement number one is, is unclear, because here it says the sample standard deviation must be equal, but the distribution must be unknown, So which is very confusing as, as it is. Um, what throws me off is the standard deviations must be equal. Why I'm saying that is if I'm if I have two samples, one can have a standard deviation of 1.5 and the other one can have a standard deviation of 0 0.2. But the pop for some, uh, when we do as a test, we can also assume that the population um, and I think it's on the notes as well that I've shared because for a two the the two means of independent samples, what I know is either the population standard deviation are unknown and they are assumed to be equal. Only the population standard deviation here I'm I'm referring to. The other thing is the they need to come from an independent uh, population where it means that the sample that was selected from one sample should have no effect on the other sample. Number two, the assumption of those um, independent uh, tests would be the sample should be drawn from that population independently the population should be normally distributed. And if it's not normally distributed, the sample size should be bigger than 30. The variance should be unknown, but assumed to be equal. That is on the population side. Now, on your questions, it says the data from the sample comes from a population that is normally distributed and the sample standard deviation are equal. And that's why it, I say it's throwing me off there because it talks about the sample, not the population. So what does your text, your study guide say on the two test sample, two sample T test? What does it say? What are the assumptions that they give you? Because then that will help you answer that question. Testing the differences between two means. Before we come, first, the difference between independent and dependent, and there we go. So the sample has no effect. There we go. That's what I just said. The two sample comes from the population and has no obvious relationship. That's one. 
So this is dependent. What other thing are they talking about? The implication of this is that, no, that is not what we're looking for. So the test, where do they talk about the assumptions? The two samples come from the same population. We've dealt with that. Don't they give you assumptions? I haven't seen that anywhere. Yeah, wait a minute on the questions on page 135, uh, 125. It says the assumption number seven on page 125. The assumptions underlying the T test are one, equal distributions and normal variances, two, unknown standard deviations, and three, normal population distributions with equal variances. And the right answer is number three, but I don't know if this is not really the same as what they're asking yes. in our question here. You see, this is normal population distribution with equal variances, so which means mm. it's equal population variances, not the sample variances. Because if you look at this, let's assume that this, or because this is, uh, is it the pre and the po No, these are two groups. These are independent. You can see that we have two different standard deviations. They are not the same. Do you understand? The independent or dependent? This is independent. Okay. Yes. Even if it's if it if it's not independent, even if it's not independent, because the mean difference between the scores will be different as well. So the sample, and that is why I'm saying, in terms of the sample, they yeah, if they could have just removed this, I would be fine with number three as an answer. I still have my own reservation on that because it says the sample standard deviation are mm. equal. They don't have to be equal, but the population standard deviation should be assumed to be equal. So if they, because we don't even know, but we need to assume that they are equal, not the sample, because we're going to be using the sample to test, to calculate. Okay. And usually the, the, the test won't be the same. So for group one, we'll have a different, like you have here, Group one has a different standard deviation, which is the same as that different variance because the standard deviation is the square root of your variance, which is different. This value is different from that value. So that's why sometimes it's very confusing. I guess maybe I need to read, go through your study guide and understand it further. Probably two years from now, I will master your psych 304 but not now. I, <laughs> it's very confusing, really. It's a lot, um, of, a lot of a lot of facts thrown into one sentence, you know. Yes. Because also number here? two says a uh, standard deviation. So from the population, so that the standard deviation need not be considered. So in terms of in terms of that, so we can say the standard deviations are unknown. Uh, not the, yeah. So it can be that the population standard deviations are unknown. And not that they are not considered. So it's very tricky to answer your module. Are we going to pass this module then? <laughs> yes, you're going to pass with flying colors. <laughs> Where's the party get, going to be? <laughs> yeah, you're going to pass with 89. You'll give them a memoranda. You'll never know. A researcher has to select the appropriate t test to compare two means in each of the situations described below. In which of the cases would a t test for independent group be the best option? So TC is independent groups. 
So evaluating the effectiveness of pain relievers by measuring how much the pain relief after taking a medication in a sample of patients. Two, evaluating the development of verbal skills between age two and age three of, for the sample of girls. Three, evaluating the differences in level of self-esteem between student athletes and non-athletes. A researcher has to select an appropriate test to compare two means in which of the following describes below. In which of the cases would a T test for independent groups be the best option? I'll go with number three because of evaluating the difference. Yes. Number three. Option. Yes. Yes, number three. Difference. And because also they are using two independent groups, which are the student athletes and the non athletes. Yes. And this one, it says they are just evaluating the development, so it's not the difference. And the first one is measuring the pain before and after. So this will be a dependent. So yeah, number three. Thank you. When would a statistician choose to do a t-test rather than a z-test to compare a sample mean for a given population? You are a statistician, ma'am. You can tell us. Number three. Number three. Uh, number three. Population <laughs> standard deviation is unknown. You need to read the, the question. So, um, the statistician will choose a t-test when the population standard deviation is unknown. A researcher wants to determine whether the level of academic accomplishment that a student has reached is in any way related to the way in which the student approaches a problem. To do this, she plans to relate to relate the exam mark of the group of undergrad students to their results on the test that indicate a problem solving style. What is the independent variable in this? Problem solving style. Number one, yes. Option three. It's the X. Definitely number one. Is it number one? A researcher nice. wants to determine whether the level of uh, the level of academic accomplishment that the student has reached in any way is related to the way in which the student approaches a problem solving. So that will be the independent variable. Oh, wait a minute. I think it's three. Three is the dependent. It means the level of academic accomplishment depends on the problem solving. How does the child solve the problem? It will result in better academic accomplishment or lower academic accomplishment. I beg to differ. I think like the level of accomplishment the academic is the one that determines the problem so according to the hands i chose option three no you are correct in in, in your explanation but uh, the answer is number one so here what it says here if if 
academic accomplishment is related to problem solving. That means if your problem solving increases or decreases, how is the academic accomplishment behaving relative to that? So you only vary your your, your problem solving. That would be your, your yes. independent variable. Yes. So in a way, you told you you told me something new today. You said to me that there is something called a construct, and a construct is where you operationalize some things and then you create a variable. So yes. in this instance, she wants to look at or whoever is she or he or okay, I must not or she. Okay, she wants to use the exam and the test mark so that she can see how they answered. Or performed on there, how does it improve the level of academic accomplishment? Because the mask that they got there tells them or will give her an indication of the problem solving thing. So the problem solving is your independent, is your input into checking your level of academic accomplishment. So you okay? Yes, yes. Yeah, I also agree now. You know. All right. Okay. So let's go there. Pearson product moment correlation can take any value between zero and minus and minus one and one and positive one. minus one and one. R can take any value between minus one and one. <laughs> Probability can take only zero and one. What is the correlation coefficient between the following variable X and Y? Looking at the data, I would say uh, three. One. One. Positive one. Yes, number one. One. Yes, number one for my student area. So if this is five minus five, I'm going to just make up values there. So if this is minus five and this one also is minus five, then it our dot will be there. And if it's this seven and seven, our dot will be there. Minus one, our dot will be there zero and if i draw this you can see that this is a positive relationship so i will assume this r is one because it's on a perfect straight line i only use those few because i can just assume make an assumptions there so this would be a positive one so that will be option number one one If it was in an opposite, they took these values and made them opposite, it would have looked somehow like an opposite direction it would be negative. We did discuss something like this earlier. As the sample size n increases, what happens? A smaller value of the Pearson correlation coefficient will reach significant. A larger value of Pearson correlation coefficient is required before the results can be significant. There are no implications on the level, on the significance of the value of the Pearson correlation coefficient. I found this answer on page. I'll tell you now. <laughs> Um, 139. Let's study. So it says, if you increase the sample size to 100, a smaller result of R will be equal to 1.60, would be significant at the same level. Where about on the page is it? 
Um, it was, it's the um, third par paragraph from the bottom up. Okay. The consequences of this is okay. that for a large okay. sample, a relative modest correlation can run out to be significant. Okay, so it says, as a sample size n increases, what happens to r? So the question there, the larger n, a smaller the result of r. r would be significant. So it would be one. Uh, I agree. Yes. We we'll also agree. Does one make sense? It's one. Okay. Question 64. Chi-square test is, comp is used to compare. Number one. One. That's your key weight. Cross tabulated. If mm -hmm. they don't talk about any other cross tabulated on the other one. So this one's talk about the extend and continuous. We know that it should be categorical. And this talk about the mean value. We know that it should be a categorical value. So only number one is correct. If there is no relationship at all between the scores, what would be the most likely value? Zero. That would Three. be zero. Three. So based on question 66 and 67, a psychologist reads an article in which the author claims that playing computer games with, oh gosh, it seems like we're repeating. She decides to test the, this by asking sample of children to report on the number of computer games they play per month, measuring aggression level of each child with an appropriate psychometric test. She expects to find that a positive correlation will exist in her sample between the level of aggression and the number of computer games played. If she should draw a graph of the relationship between the aggression and the number of computer game which the scatter plot below will give the most probable representation of the data if the expected relationship exists graph a number one because she said it's positive so it should be great Graph A, graph A. If only all the questions were like this one. Yay, definitely. Mm. What? <laughs> <laughs> what would be the most appropriate test to use? Because the hypothesis implied by this scenario above. Pierce. Number three. Number? Three. three. Number three. Base your answers to the question of 68 and 69 on the following. A researcher wants to establish whether the type of employment category is filled by employees of a particular company is, all, is at all influenced by their gender. He collects a data from a sample of 100 employees where each employee is categorized as manager, middle manager. Number two. Data. Contingency. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. I'm getting tired. Because they are both categorical data, so it's contingency. Mm. 
Which of the mm. following is the appropriate test? The relationship exists between two Number and three. Two. It's a chi squared. You think clever? So it means when you're writing your test, you must start bottom up because it seems like the ones at the bottom are easy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so that you don't run out of time. So uh, the contingency. Anything on chi square is easier. Yeah, the contingency table below, and we want what would be the expected frequency for rural males. And that's the question. Calculate the expected frequency of rural males. So they have calculated the totals. All right, right total means. times column total over grand total. Yes, you just take that, multiply by that, divide by that. So it's six, multiply by six, divide by 18. Mm -hmm. Row total times column total, divide by the grand total. Okay. Wow. Two. It's equals to two. 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 Yeah. And that's with forty minutes to spare because I aimed for eight dot long. Yeah, we done. So, <laughs> It was I a wish pleasure. I could be as excited oh, as you. Could you go back to 54 quickly for me, please? I, I am 64. Going to 64. 64. 64. Mm. I missed that one. Okay, one. Okay, thank you. Thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, seven. Almost now, you want the whole paper? Thank you very much. No, I was trying to. Okay, what I will do is I will, I will, I will post this on on WhatsApp. I will save it. Okay. Let me save it. Okay. But, yeah, but then it's not all. Okay, you will, you will remember that it's not all the answers. Because now I need to go back because I'm deleting some of there when I delete. I will go into continue tomorrow. Okay, so guys, uh, uh, this concludes my, uh, my engagement with you guys. So because I. The week or any other week. but it was my pleasure uh, working with you guys. I wish you all the best with your exam. But remember, you can still also communicate on what I'm not granting that you answer every message that you send during the week. But I will try my level best to look at the the chat and then also um uh, do the activities if you want i can i can leave i can give you or no you can use the same link you can come to this session the same link to do your 2020 together alone tomorrow or wh whenever you can still go into my link i'm, I'm i won't mind you using it um maybe i can also come in and 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 spy on you guys while you are working but i'm not promising anything but if you want to continue working together as a group like this online somebody sharing the exam paper and you all working through it you can do that using the hopefully, hopefully there won't be any arguments <laughs> pardon i'm saying hopefully there won't be any arguments 
we'll keep uh-uh. it clean like we have done. You need to keep it. You need to keep it clean. You need to work together. And if you don't agree, we you don't agree. Down. You move on. <laughs> um. But yeah, because I've got other other yeah. things that I need to complete yeah, yeah. with my own tomorrow. Because today I sacrificed my my afternoon session. So, yeah. but all the best, guys. I wish you all the best, and thank you very much. Mrs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you for your. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you so much. Thank you.